Let's talk about life, the ups and downs it throws at us, while we pick ourselves up and learn to move forward, along with a little bit of sports and everyday talk added in. Let's dive deep. Happy New Year. Welcome to the Deep Dive with Dave. I'm Dave. January 2nd, 2024. Let's get started and dive on in. New Year. New Year, a new me. It's a big thing you always end up hearing. Everyone looking to start now. Start the year off right. So new year, new me, coming up with all kinds of plans and ideas and just all kinds of things that you want to come up with to change who you are. It's always nice to think that way, but a lot of people are who they are. It's a lot of stress to kind of put on yourself for just trying to start it all. Okay, new year, new me. Let's just change it up. Gonna just switch it all up now. It's uh, January 1st. Everything's gonna be different this year. I don't see it that way. You gotta take a <laughs> little, steal it from there, but baby steps. Set goals that are able to be accomplished to where when you have your missteps, you have your your failures, your fall down, you fall flat on your face. You have, I want to get in shape. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to be healthy. And then all of a sudden this weekend, you skipped a couple days already and you already ate fast food. You sat down and ate your chips. You already drank pop. Don't crush yourself and be like, oh, this year's ruined. Just set yourself up one day at a time. Just because it's a new year doesn't mean it has to be a new you right away. Set small goals, one step at a time. Don't have to throw all of that on yourself to all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just tomorrow's going to be different. That's it. No turning back. It's a good mindset to have. But don't crush yourself when you fail each time. Now, I do it consistently. Have good weeks, good stretches. And all of a sudden, I'll have one terrible weekend where we'll be eating no, I'll, wing zings. I'll eat a bucket of them to where I look at <laughs> I look at the scale and I'm like, holy, what just happened to me? How did I just three straight weeks of doing everything the right way? Perfect. Drinking a gallon of water a day, going to the gym five, six times a week. And then I took one weekend, three days in a row, a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And Monday, I step on the scale and I go... Seriously, <laughs> those last three weeks literally were for nothing, according to this scale. I don't throw in the towel. I just regroup, take the, the pluses out of that, that schedule. Okay, what did I do right during this time? Get back, get back to it. And that's what the new year's got to be for everybody. Learn from your failures and your mistakes. Take positive steps. Even when you misstep, take a positive out of it and continue moving forward. Nobody's going to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to every step of the way do everything correctly. It's the goal. But you got to understand how to continue to persevere. Another movie line. Why do we, why do we fall? So we can learn to pick ourselves up. It's consistent. You're going to have to take the positives out of the negatives if you want to continue to grow. And I think that's a good way to look at the new year, new me. It's one step at a time with it. You want to be a new you. You don't have to look at it and do it all at once. But it doesn't have to just be because it's, well, it's the new year. You pick up when it doesn't matter when. I was probably at my worst physically 
going into about the February time of 2022. And my we were living in Florida. Brother came to visit. And he was down visiting us and went to the gym more times than I did the entire time I was down there. Finding little places to get a, okay, hey, come down. You get, you know, a free workout for your trip to the gym. Cool. You get a free one-time check. Okay, cool. And he'd try that and he found a gym and I ended up going to that gym afterwards. But it, it, it threw me off. Like, I live here and I don't go to the gym. He's on vacation and he's finding out where to go. I was just looking at myself like, what am I doing? Look in the mirror and I'm like, this, I don't, I'm continuing to lose who I am. That was the beginning of it. It was February of 2022. Took a long time and I hadn't touched weights in forever and done anything in forever. One small step at a time. Got to get in a rhythm. Got to get in a routine. Got to get out of my own head. Got to take each failure of what I was expecting. And, okay, I'm going to walk back in. I can do this. And my body was, no, you are not. That's not happening at all. But then to, you know, get back into it. and Get myself to continue to go. And not slow down with it to where, well, I'm sore and I'm going to take time off and I'll, I'll get back to it next week. Why does it have to be next week? Why does it have to be oh, on Monday? I'll do it. Like, why not tomorrow? Like, do something different tomorrow. Change it up. Do something different. Get yourself there. Make something happen. And I kept that going. And that really helped clear my head because I was in a bad spot mentally as well during a lot of that you know as somebody who didn't really like to be open about what goes on in my head and didn't do a good job communicating and took a lot of that out not purposely or what I noticed I was doing would take it out with more controlling over certain things at home where it has to be done my way. And why is it this? Why is this lining up like I thought? What are you doing wrong? How come? And I was just trying to make other things fill the gaps. And a lot of stuff, it was just, I, I, I built a house of cards that were continuing to get ready to fall. And I did not see what was clear in front of me. Like, you know, the nose on your face, it's right there. It's right in front of you. It's in your eyesight all the time. You just overlook it. And it took a really big situation for me to come to grips with what I was failing at, to take a giant step back to then look within, to find who I really have become compared to who I want to be and expect to be myself. And it was very eye-opening. And I'm very lucky that I'm married to a wonderful woman who gave me that opportunity to start to prove back to her who I am instead of who I had become. Not purposely, but takes time and it takes effort and you have to be aware and you can't continue to place blame in outward directions and you get that mirror. You have to look in it and understand when things are going wrong. It can't always be someone else, someone else's fault. It's something else is causing it. A lot of times it's what's in the mirror and it's a hard thing to, it's a hard pill to swallow, you know, and a lot of things that you can do is just to set small goals, set small accomplishments you know you can do to start building that confidence back up for yourself, to get yourself moving forward in a direction to start regaining some pride, to succeed, to then stop looking at things that don't matter and focus on the things that do. And it took a long time for me to get to that. And I, I almost did lose everything. You know, I, I was at a bad spot to where 
my wife could have taken her and the kids and said, I'm here, here's some papers, sign them. I can't, I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm lucky that it all came out when it did. And I had time to talk it over and talk to a therapist and find out what was wrong with me on why I'm not seeing these things that are right in front of me to then start realizing, okay, let's start building on things. Let's start fixing stuff. And then the gym really did help because, you know, I grew up athletic and doing, you know, playing sports and played football and ended up in my early twenties wanting to play hockey my whole life. I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm buying all the hockey equipment. I'm going every morning. I'm, I'm learning. And I actually did. I learned how to play hockey and enjoyed it. It was a new kind of uh, activity, a new sport to just get out there and to do something. Because football, that was the one thing I, I, I what sports wise that I enjoyed because I actually didn't suck at it. Like I did growing up playing basketball and baseball and football actually was something that was there. And I didn't realize it until high school. But learning how to play hockey, okay, there's an activity. And then doing stuff with MMA, okay, activities, things, tasks, challenges. And I lost sight of that when getting married and having kids, everything went on the back burner. And a big thing that also happened with that, a lot of times it gets lost in it, is things that the individual also can use to relieve stress and not put pressure externally on other things because you do need a release. You do need to have something. It could be working out. It could be running. It could be playing chess. It could be video games, whatever it is, as a way to take what's happening in your everyday real life where there are stresses or again, reading a book to just take a step back to decompress and hitting the bag or lifting some weights or going for a run or swimming. Those are things that you can do as an activity to get that free. And it, I had to circle back to that because that's what it used to be when I was younger and played the sports to get into the gym, to continue to progress and challenge myself to get stronger, to get faster, to get bigger. And then it just stopped. And then all that, frustration kept building up of, well, I'm gaining weight. I'm out of shape. I'm not all these other things. And it just, it spilled over. And over the last almost two years now, you got to find things that work. And during that time, a lot of things have happened. I mean, 2023 was a year. (laughs) We were down in Florida. And towards the beginning of the year, realized we got to kind of make our way back up because Florida is a wonderful place we've looked at and visited and went down to year after year after year. And as far back as when we started going, and I believe it was 13, where we, it's, we I went down there. That was the first time I've ever been down there. And We were like, we got to move here. I want to live here. This is, we got to make this happen. And every year we'd go down there from Chicago, get down there and drive back into the snow. Like, why, why do we live here? Why, Why don't we just stay? It's awesome. What are we doing? And, um, it's not the same Florida as it was. You know, the, the, the market itself, yeah, the COVID, I mean, it, hey, it's a destination. And they threw prices on stuff that if we would have bought that place in 15, 16, 17, somewhere in there, could have bought one of the same houses for $175,000 that we're selling for three seventy five or 400 And it's like, just, it's wild. And homeowner's insurance, that's just crazy skyrocketing. That they're just double and tripling and quadrupling the prices to where they're pricing people out of it and taking a giant price cut 
or pay cut to move down there did not work out the way we planned. Spent a good two years down in Florida. Enjoyed the hell out of it. Kids loved going to the beach, splashing in the ocean, running around in the sand. Enjoyed beach days and doing video calls with my parents up here. I'm on the beach, it's 90, and it's sub-zero temperatures up in Chicago. But it was not a failure. It was an experience and got to enjoy it. Came back, working back up here in Chicago. But again, just because it looks as it could be, as a failure, doesn't have to be. You come back, things are different, but you know what? It's a learning experience. You use it later on. What went wrong? What went right? You know, what can you gain out of it? And um, it's just one of those type of things you can always look to use to build who you are and, you know, circle back to progression, you know, and being able to put stuff as you want to, you know, progress to move forward you know, putting yourself with, you know, giving yourself a, um, you know, manifestation board, as my wife told me, that's a good one to put together. What, you know, what are your goals? What are you looking to accomplish to, to put these things in front of you to where you want to be able to succeed, keep this in front of you, keep it in your, your daily sites to where it's right there, reminding you to continue to make progress. Don't just put it off till tomorrow. What can you do today to make yourself better than yesterday? You can't always just like, I'll do it tomorrow. You're going to procrastinate the same thing. Tomorrow's going to roll around. You're going to say the same old stuff. I'll do it tomorrow. Trust me. I did that forever. Ah, you know, Monday, I'm starting Monday. I'm going to eat healthy Monday. I'm starting healthy Monday. I'm going to get back to the gym. Monday would roll around after a long day. I get on like, ah, I'll, I'll, I'll go tomorrow. And then tomorrow's like, ah, it's already, I'm, it's already going to be going on Wednesday. Yeah, you know, let's just finish through this. I'll do it next week. I'm going to get ready. Let's get ourselves. I'm going to do it next week. I did that for years. Or I would go to the gym for two weeks. And I'd be sore. My body, you know, oh, everything's hurting. I got to take a week to recover. I got to get back at it. I'll, 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 I'll take a week off and get back at it. Three months later, I didn't touch a single weight. Didn't do a single <laughs> exercise of anything and that's it go to start up again go for a week or two and it was just a com- complete repetitive cycle and being able to put something in front of you to where whether it's going back to school whether it's finding something you want to learn about whether it's learning a new language whether it's finding something you're just you're not sure of and trying to get more information on it. What can you do? How do you get better? Read books, watch YouTube videos on, you know, people who have done this and have succeeded and, and can, you can get as much information, you know, following people on this endless stream of information at our fingertips to better yourself on a daily basis or at least a weekly basis. There's no need to continue to be the same person forever. You can make progress. You can get better. You can move forward. And I believe that's what we have to do is, you know, a society and as people, as individuals, stop looking outward for what you can do from within inside yourself, you know, and, and being able to put a on it to the uh, um, manifestation board together to, you know, set up a checklist for yourself on things you want to be able to, you know, on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis, check off of a list to where, Hey, by the end of the year, I want to be able to do these several things. And I'm going to focus down this list, start here. I'm going to work to the end. I want to be by the end of this year, month by month, be able to do some of this stuff, whether it's, you know, again, learning a language, being able to learn, you know, how to, 
you know, whether it's again something to do with weights, lifting heavier, running faster, doing better. I want to run a, a a marathon, whether it's a, you know a five k and whatever other case you can do. I'm not a runner, but to be able to have these things that you can check off and then make a progress a progression to the next step to where you can possibly work your way up to an actual marathon and to be able to continue to do that and, and, and set goals for yourself even if it is just something simple whether it's not things like that but doing stuff with your family taking them to you know the museums or learning about other things that they can be into and doing that with them, whether you know, te- teaching your kids a sport, going out there and spending the time, teaching them how to dribble a basketball or throw a baseball or catch a football or putt a golf ball. I can't do golfing, but hey, here's the motion. Have fun with it. Let's learn. I'll learn with you. Let's do this together where you're building that relationship, where you're both learning, you're both enjoying it, and you're coming together. And these are, you know, just small things to do to set for yourself, for your family, for each other to grow with, you know, and and so look at a lot of these things and take your failures and what you feel like you're falling flat on your face, like, oh, it didn't work. Well, are you sure? Because you can take something out of that to continue to build upon. So your failures aren't really failures. They're just positives hidden that you got to be able to pull out and make it happen. And I I believe a lot of people have to stop being so negative. I know I'm one of those people as well. you, You have to be able to find the positives, stick with it, roll with it, and not always be in a situation where if it didn't work the way you thought it would, when you thought it would, that's it. It's over. I failed. It's done. Let's move on. Oh, you know, that's not necessary. And a lot of stuff like that, a lot of those type of thoughts are learned behaviors from you know, the way you may have grown up or who you were around, a lot of negative thoughts and a lot of, you know, ways that have been pretty much around you your entire life to where being successful isn't always about just having successful things happen. It's about finding what was successful for yourself that you can grow upon and continue to build. You know, and I, I believe that that's something that, you know, people have to accept more, you know, and then how I was saying with 2023 started in Florida, Florida pretty much prices, priced us out, had to come back up to Chicago, came back up, jumped into my old career up here. I went down to Florida and I was the boss. Come back up to Chicago and go all man on the totem pole where I'm at, but it is what it is. I'm in a nice area where, you know, I moved out side of Chicago, but moved out of the, into the deep suburb area, deep, deep area down um, from where we were kind of looking on the outskirts of the distance for where it needed to be, but kind of restarted a great community for the kids kids have a bunch of other kids on the block a lot of good stuff kids school is really good really surprising me from what i was expecting and the 2023 20, year has you know had its ups and downs and you know for myself it's again it's just that learning curve and i'm really excited about Not just 2024 because it's a new year, but to start and continue to grow, to continue to build, to continue to open up and look at the horizons for what everybody has. Everybody here should be able to, you know, look at what we can do, what we can, what we can get. And as a group, as a collective 
you know, amount of people to, you know, really focus on an internal way for each individual to find happiness instead of always looking to be miserable. You can go anywhere you want to and either find things that'll make you happy or focus on things that'll make you negative and make you sad and make you worry and make you, you know, just continually live in a fearful way. And that's where I'm hoping a lot of people in 2024 really, you know, take a step back because look at over how the last few years have gone. They throw it in your face. Oh, hey, we know what's best for you. The news telling you what it is. Hey, this is how it is. You got to do this because we're telling you, we're looking out for you because we said so. But what are they doing? They're just expecting you to just do what you're told. No critical thinking anymore. No one using common sense to really think for themselves. Do what we say or else. And if you don't do what we say, you're a conspiracy theorist. Like, really? Is, is that what it is now? If we don't go with exactly what we're told, we're a conspiracy theorist. Um, no, maybe I'm just thinking for myself. Maybe what you're saying doesn't add up. Or where's the proof? Well, we know what's up. We, we know. How do you know? This stuff just started happening. What? How can you know anything when nobody knows anything yet? Just be always oh, said so. And then everybody flip-flopping and everybody's doing this. And then everything becomes politically charged. I hate politics. Both sides of the fence are out for themselves. To then just get everybody following them to be against each other and have a divide down the middle. To where nobody gets along. You either see red, you either see blue, you see black, you see white. There's no unity. There's no conformity with ourselves as a country, what's best for us as a whole. It turns into just everybody's pointing the fingers. Oh, you're some type of ist or ism. It's just, can't we all just <laughs> get along? You know, but for real, it's just one of those things to where I'm, I'm really about a hopeful outlook for this year that people depend less on the news that's out to poison you. Because they will hide the facts because they no longer have to tell you the facts. They tell you what they want you to hear to get you to tune in to then take a piece of what the news is and then fill it with opinion. And what their point of view is and then continue to go from part of the fact to throw something back out there to grip you again. Like, see, I know that's a thing that's going on. And then back to opinions or what they're told to throw towards you to get you to hate the other side even more. But there shouldn't be sides like that. It should be what's best for us as a whole. And it's just amazing that it's just devolving into what it is and continuing to just go straight down the tubes. And it's a sad situation. I really do have a good outlook or a hopeful outlook that this year really does get people to focus more inwardly on making themselves happy, which when you're going to be, you're going to then give that energy off. That's something that I've always had a hard time with. There's like these happy people. I remember when I was at my you know previous job prior to Florida, there was this guy who used to work on our seventh floor downtown Chicago. Um, he was the happiest freaking dude and always chipper and fun and talking with you. And, hey, hey, how's it going, Dave? And I'm chatting with him and, you know, a really nice guy. And then I'm looking at him and one day, you know, I went to go do something in our little fitness center we had on our ninth floor. And I was in there and all, he's talking me up with other people in the area. And I was like, hey, how's it going? And I look over and he's walking on the treadmill and he went to lift his leg up to scratch where his knee was. And from the knee down, he had a prosthetic. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy is, is happier than shit all the time. And he doesn't even have all of it. He, he's missing a foot. 
He's messing me down on that. And I'm sitting here all the time like, how am I always so damn miserable over something so stupid that I'll figure out ways to just be unhappy or grumpy or thinking about stuff. And this guy's walking around every day missing part of his, you know, body. And walking around as happy as can be, putting smiles on your faces, just smiling consistently. And I do think about that still to this day is this guy. Can't remember his name, but how this guy would, I would immediately see him from a distance and I'd have a smile on my face. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And I'd be smiling and talking real quick. Just 10 seconds talking to him and I walk away with a smile on my face like, what the fuck just happened? How does he do that? How does this guy, 10 seconds, just saying hi to me, put a smile on my face? But that's what we need to do because if we're happy with ourselves and we're happy with who we are, we're going to project that towards people. We're going to rub off on people. We're going to make other people happy. Other people can get that. And we'll be able to run with it. Each person making everybody else around them happy. Well, guess what? That's a much better society. It's a better way. Much better place. I'm really hoping that we see more of that instead of always looking for, oh, this person's bad. Oh, that person's unhappy. Oh, a smile goes a long way. And I'm, I'm really looking this year to put that on my, you know, um, manifestation board for myself is to smile more, to project more happiness for others. You know, when I go to the gym, I've been, I've been trying to really push myself to when somebody's struggling with something or just needing that little bit of extra just to go over to them and just without, hey, let me give you a hand here or just spot them or give Give support where somebody might not look to ask for because they, they sometimes you could tell looking at somebody and they kind of feel out of place. They don't feel comfortable enough to ask, but you know what? I'll ask you, do you need a spot? Do, do you need a hand? And nine times out of 10, yeah, you know, I, I could. Thank you. Hey, don't, don't mention it. Don't mention it. Anytime, let me know. You know, that, that goes a long way and just doing something that simple doesn't take much you know and it's something that I gotta continue to do and build upon you know and I'm I'm excited for a very good year and and we all have to have that outlook to get better and be better and we have to expect that from ourselves and push ourselves to be that way and Things can really change. I really am looking forward to seeing how that plays out. But sliding off the subject of how that'll play out with society, um, another thing that'll play out in the next few months will be the NFL draft which my hometown team will have the number one pick. And based on how things will most likely go, the Bears will most likely fuck it up and pick the wrong player or somehow just do what they do best, not do the right thing. But I'm wondering how they should play this out. One Eberflus should not be the coach. Just, he's got no clock management. He has the worst ability to manage any type of gameplay with clock, with play calling, with how the offensive coordinator has just very little comprehension of what is needed from his team throughout that middle of the season to where they I'm I don't want to say 50 50 with fields. I'm a little higher. I I have liked his progression, but I did feel at the beginning of the season, the first five games or so, I felt like he was handcuffed. They weren't giving him the opportunity to just, Hey, here's the offense. Here's our playbook. Here's what's going on. Let's, let's do what's best. 
these are the plays I think that are going to work with how the situation looks instead of, well, let's see like how everything went with Nagy and Trubisky. Well, you know, he doesn't gra- grasp the playbook. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> Run the plays you think that are going to be needed to be ran to get down the field. Otherwise, everybody's messing up. Open the playbook up with what you think the offense is going to need. If that's in your playbook, then run it. Everything should be open for trying to win the game. And as the season went on, he seems to have a lot more deep downfield plays, deep downfield passes. Beginning of the season, it would just be, okay, huck it way down the field, just chuck it down there. When there was really no real routes being ran, it was just pretty much just wing it. But everything was within like a seven and eight yards. Just, okay, this is where everything is. Little slant routes and stops and curls and hooks and, you know, just nonstop screen plays. Within the last four or five weeks where we've really been playing well, there's a giant difference in how now these plays, there's 12, 15 yard down the field looks. They're running plays. And the Bears are making plays. It would be, I don't know, do you trade out of the first pick, get a haul? Depending on who, who lands at number two, do you trade out of possibly the top two picks? Grab a Marvin Harrison. Try to grab future number ones plus players you can use now plus second rounders to get those first two and end up with like a, you know, a fourth or fifth pick, fourth pick, third pick. Something where you could trade down and trade down again to continue. Okay, you know what? We're sticking with fields. Instead of starting the whole thing over, hitting the reset button, go get a quarterback coach who knows how to talk and explain what's going to be needed to a quarterback instead of a, another defensive minded coach. Get a guy who knows what's going on, who's still going to now be the head coach and get another guy in there. Who's going to call an offense that he agrees with and they can run with? And that's don't hit the reset button again. Try to do again. Look what they were able to do, bringing in DJ Moore, getting the number one pick coming up, making progress with that. They I, it worked out well. Now you can do the same thing, but it's going to have a, an even bigger price on it to where do you trade down? Okay, trade down one of the picks. Grab one of the two quarterbacks, trade fields, and you're starting over, but you could still get a number two and still try to grab a quarterback and try to walk off with Marvin Harrison Jr. That would be a huge haul. Starting off, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's where we're going. We're running with it. I don't know. It's going to be uh, an interesting thing to see and run with here when the draft happens, seeing how – they can really, really mess something up here. <laughs> but we won't know, and they can make the right decision. Only time's going to tell once the draft does play out. And Who do they end up with, and what do they end up doing? It's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be fun to see. And um, going from one sport to the next, these Blackhawks, they have a player on their hands. There's Connor Bedard. Watching him, I mean, he is very exciting for the future. I, I really do wish that Kaner, instead of jumping to the Red Wings, they watched them just start losing a ton of games, came back home here and showed this kid like, all right, yeah, you got a lot of skill sets I started with, but you're a step ahead of me already. You're already doing what I was getting to in year number three. You're already there at 18 years. He'll be 18 this entire season. He's not 18 turning 19 now like Kane did. He was drafted at 18, turned 19 that November. He was already 19. This kid's going to be 18 from start to finish. I mean, this kid doesn't have to look up. He knows that that's, I mean, that puck is on a string attached to him. He doesn't have to look down. He knows exactly what's happening. I, the overtime winner he had the last week did took it from his own, his zone up the middle in between two defenders wrist shot didn't have to nothing right in 
didn't look down, didn't even glance at the ice, head up the whole way. And he's got that confidence where you saw Ovechkin have in that, where I'm just going to shoot. If there's nothing available, I'm going to shoot. I mean, that would be nice having Kane back to show this guy, hey, I can feed you the puck. I can get some points here, too. I, I, I always wanted to see him pass Nikita as the number one on the Hawks' all-time points list. I, I wanted that so bad for him to stay around long enough to pass that and be number one on the list. And he was pretty close. Definitely got close. And I'm, I'm really excited to see where this kid's you know, progression takes over the next couple of seasons because right now, being as young as he is, still slight frame he is, which is not too bad because he's already about the same size Kane is now. And Kane came in at like 5'8", 160 pounds, and he's like 5'10", 180, 185. Bedard's already there. So Bedard's still got some room to kind of grow into a body in the next couple of years where he might fill out a little bit, maybe hit another inch and then put on another 15, 20, 25 pounds. That would be nice to see. So got a little bit of a bright future here. Little outlook for the Blackhawks takes me back. I mean, I feel old now remembering when all this stuff happened. I was in my mid twenties when the Hawks were doing this stuff with Kane and, uh, it's it's fun getting to see it again. And then who knows what the hell the, the Bulls are ever going to do. All they do is they, they just they, – I think they got to get Levine, or Levine, Levine. Uh, they, they, I think they need to trade him. He's, I think, their best player, but they just don't they, – they need to just blow the team up. Start from scratch, blow the team up, do what they got to do to um, get some draft picks. Get what they can for the players that they have. I don't understand why they traded for, you know, Vukovic, Vucevic, whatever. I, that was the most ridiculous trade to give away a first-round pick to, to get him. I mean, he was always just a very above-average center. Yeah, he got some points and some rebounds, but he was on a crap team that had no playmakers. It just fed it into him, and it was not like it was a shack where he's putting up 30 and 15 comes here, doesn't man the, the middle, and uh, DeMar DeRozan toss him towards a team making a push where he can maybe pull in a – go after a ring, get some assets for the future because the Hawks – the, the, the Bulls, with where they're currently at, they're just in, you know, purgatory. Along you know, Alonzo Ball going down. With that injury, it's just terrible. Because with him out there, him to facilitate to get each one of these players that need the ball in their hands to be effective, he was able to get them that ball in the position they could be at their best to make it happen at a quick, you know, progression. And and it's just it's just crazy watching just how terrible. That team has gone downhill since his injury. But that was episode one. Thank you all for following here with me. Tune on in, and we will continue doing this. We'll keep at it, and we will look to have a great year together. All right, everybody, take it easy.